Happy Friday. Uh, this little Friday fraud law review concerns a matter in New Jersey, my old stopping ground. That's where I grew up. And I do a lot of work in Jersey to this day in the social security disability field. Okay, so <clears throat> this person was not convicted. He was only indicted. So I'm not going to name his name because I strongly agree with the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. So let it play out accordingly. But here's the allegations. Um, it looks like this person, this fellow was a banker in Essex County and uh, namely in a, a bank in Nutley, New Jersey. And one, a customer was receiving retirement benefits, social security retirement benefits via direct deposit, like most of us do when we receive any kind of benefit. Uh, the social security administration was not notified of this customer's death, the passing of the customer. Now, normally that happens a family often will be the one to advise the SSA. And if there's a death certificate they have their hands on, they can send that in as well. Other times it's the, I want to say it's the funeral home, but that's not necessarily, I mean, I don't know if there is an actual requirement of funeral homes to notify the SSA. There might be, there might be some statutory thing in various states, you know, um, to notify. I don't know. I know that's often how it happens. So um, it's either the family or the funeral home and it, and it seems to cover a lot of people. In this case, apparently no such thing happened. And four years go by. Um, and apparently, and this was back in like 2014. Until I think, yeah, okay. So the customer died. The direct deposit retirement benefits continued to be deposited for more than four years until 20, late 2018. Um, this particular bank employee decided to um, fraudulently, as they say, obtain the funds from the beneficiary's account by causing debit cards to be issued to himself in the beneficiary's name. And then he used them to drain the retirement benefits from the beneficiary's bank account. Four years, that's quite a bit of, quite a bit of money, right? Um, he also looks like registered new accounts, or this is the allegation, with a money service provider in the name of the deceased beneficiary and withdrew money from the second bank account that was held in the beneficiary's name. It turns out he fraudulently obtained more than $105,000 that was intended for the deceased beneficiary. So they do go on to say that this is, I guess this is a wire fraud for sure. Um, and it's punishable by a maximum penalty of 30 years in prison and a maximum $1 million fine. I'm not seeing a minimum noted. I don't know why that is. Uh, not my forte, this criminal stuff. So it'll be interesting to see if the person is convicted and if so, what the penalty will be. Um, I think it should be really high. I know I sound like such a meanie, right? I say this often. Um, because a working in a bank, you're under a position of trust. You are, in, you asked to be, you know, you put it out there that you're trustworthy to handle money, other people's monies. Um, and it wasn't like a one-time hit. They did it on and on and on for four years, allegedly. And did that secondary act of fraud, um, by registering new accounts with a money service provider, I'm not sure what that means. Is that a bank? Is that an online thing? I don't know. In the name of the deceased beneficiary. So, I mean, he was doing identity theft, I would think. So it'll be interesting to see if they report back as to the final resolution. Is he convicted? And if so, what will the sentence be? Um, do I think 30 years in prison is appropriate? Probably not. Um, million dollar fine? Possibly. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he made out with 105. Supposedly, it looks like 105. And I'm going to link this below. Um, and a million is far more. Obviously, he needs to do restitution of whatever he took that was not his to take.
but I don't think that should be where it's left off. So I don't think a hundred hundred and five dollar restitution should be the end of the story. I think there needs to be a hefty, a hefty fine. Um, you know, you have to you have to make it hurt more than it more than just a a, a wash, right? To uh, persuade people not to do it. It looks like um, the Social Security Administration was involved in the privacy investigation. Um, yeah, and also there's representation by Assistant U.S. Attorney um, who is part of the Organized Crimes and Gang Unit in Newark, New Jersey. Mild stomping ground. That's where I went to law school in Newark, New Jersey. I also worked there <laughs> at a at a large insurance or financial investments too. Um, it was big big wig back in the day in Newark. Still probably is, but now there's so many competitors, right? Um, not that there weren't then, but yeah, generally we thought of them as an insurance company. Anyway, and that's where I worked before I went to law school. I did that a couple of years right out of undergrad. Did my little hour long plus commute to Newark um, and then resigned and went to school in Newark. So yeah, I used to hang there a lot. Okay, that's it. Stealing from a deceased customer. I guess he thought no harm, no foul. Well, not necessarily, maybe he had family, <laughs> who knows? Although of course, any money is just to clarify <clears throat> the month the beneficiary passes away, he is not due for that month of benefit. And of course, nothing thereafter. He is, he, it, it works out pretty well in terms of timing if people report timely because we have to survive the month in order to be due the benefit for that. So let's say we're in December. We have to survive December to get paid for it and it's not payable till January. You know how there's always that one month. You get paid after the month is complete to ensure that you actually survive the month and are due that check. So anyway, but four years of deceased, you know, payments being sent to someone who is not entitled and is in fact deceased. So pretty bad. Um, but look how long he got away with it for. Wow. All right. That's enough. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great weekend. Bye.